Hi travellers and welcome to this week's video giving you a four wheel drive tour driving from Noosa to Double Island Point all the way along the beach. Just to show you what to expect, the conditions and things you need to know before taking the trip. Double Island Point is an amazing little day trip location and I'll go into more detail about that when we get there. Just to explain our four wheel drive tour today and the route we'll be taking. We are starting today's drive from Brisbane and taking us about two hours from the city, exiting at the Yamundi Noosa Road and ending up at Marindal Street where the North Shore Ferry Crossing is. After crossing the river, we'll go past the Noosa North Shore campgrounds, drive onto the beach and start heading up the Kalula Coast or Tiawa Beach. When we get to the end of Kalula Beach, we'll cross through the Leisha Four Wheel Drive track to Double Island Point and our last stop for today. As mentioned before, this drive requires a ferry crossing at Noosa North Shore and you'll get stopped at the end of Marindal Street and simply line up waiting your turn. This can be a really long time if you're crossing at a busy period, but luckily we were travelling in a slow one. It will cost $10 for a car each way and you'll just pay this on the day when getting on the ferry. It helps to have the right amount of money, but the guy should have a little bit of change. Also know that it operates from 5.30 in the morning until 10 p.m. at night or midnights on weekends. You stay in your vehicle and it takes about five minutes to get across to the other side. Then you're driving off the ferry and on your way. If you need any snacks, supplies, drinks, or wasting some time until the tides come down, then you have the Noosa North Shore Convenience Centre. There's a bar and grill, souvenir store, and alcohol if you want. Stock up on anything you haven't packed before heading down the beach, because there's no more stores after this. Before you access the beach, you need to purchase the Kalula Vehicle Permit from the Queensland National Parks website, which you can do a couple of days beforehand. This is currently purchased as a daily, weekly, monthly or yearly permit and obviously varies in price. We only needed it for the day and it costs $13.95 and you must tell them which day you're going. You'll eventually find out that when you enter the beach, your number plate is read by the cameras of what you put on the permit. It only takes about 10 minutes to get from the ferry to access the beach, but here is where you'll need to keep an eye on the times and only access the beach when you have enough time to get back. All the cars will use this spot to let down their tyres and check that they have all their gear secured and obviously wait for the tides. You can use something like Wiley Weather website to help with that, which tells you the high and low tides as well as the height of the tide. Your best time will be shortly after high tide and the weather and conditions will determine how long after. But on this particular day for us, we drove onto the beach about one and a half hours after high tide. I must admit that some of these areas were still a little high, but it was only gonna get better for us. This stretch of coastline is only accessible by four wheel drive, making it the perfect place to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. You'll find plenty of people parking up for the day somewhere along the beach for swimming and fishing. There'll be a few cars driving around up and down the beach. But if you want to hang out here for the day, then there is plenty of beach available and you're sure to find a spot on your own or grab a group of friends. And this is where you can just sit back and admire the beauty that the Queensland coast can offer. While driving along the Kalula coast, you'll pass by the Tiawa Beach Camping Zones, which has plenty of camping sites stretched over about 10 kilometres of beachfront land. But with the no camping areas in between each zone, it's probably more the size of 20 to 30 kilometres long. It's a pretty popular camping ground and busy times will book out far in advance. 
can also be pretty busy and not always suitable for every type of camper. This includes a lacking of wind protection coming off the beach. But I would love waking up to the sound of the waves and sitting back with a few drinks while watching the sunset in the afternoon. I'm going to try out the Tiawa Beach camping site sometime soon and I'll be sure to post about my experience, so stay tuned for that. As you start making your way towards the end, you'll pass by the freshwater track. This is your inland way to Rainbow Beach, especially if the tides are too high or the beach is impassable to get there due to obstructions. This does happen a lot, so it's nice to know that you have options. We drove this track in another four wheel drive video from Rainbow Beach that I posted at the start of the year and I'll put a link to that in the description below. It is extremely soft sand going through here and only a single lane track with cars going both ways. So make sure you've lowered the pressure in your tyres and give way to other cars when you can. Towards the end of the Kalula Coast or Tiawa Beach, there is a nice little cove for swimming, but also a walking track taking you up to the lighthouse and lookout point over the rocky headland. It's a 2.2 kilometre walk, returning on the same track back to where you started, and it took us about 40 minutes to complete. It was easy to follow and perfect enough for us to walk in thongs. All in all, just another option of something to do along this route. The lighthouse was built in 1884 and you have some information boards to read when you get up there, along with the magnificent views down both sides of the beaches. The Leisha Track is your access point joining Kalula Beach and Double Island Point. It's only 900 metres long and takes about five minutes to drive through it. But the only way you're going to get to Double Island from Noosa. Both the entrance and exits are fitted with mats to help with traction and reduce the erosion damage. The track itself is a bit rough and very soft sand, but easy enough if you have lowered your tyre pressure. Before you know it, you've made it over to Double Island Point and our last stop for the day on this four wheel drive tour. If you got lucky with a beautiful day and low tides, then you have plenty of sandy spots to park up for the day. High tide will have most of this inaccessible, but as the water recedes, you're left with a huge sandy spit and you're able to drive in and around it. Busy days will have cars parked up along the shores and families taking advantage of the swimming and fishing opportunities. On occasions, the waves here are a great place to learn to surf and you'll find tours are run here to do so from Rainbow Beach. Another tour running from Rainbow Beach would be the kayaking with potential to see dolphins. And I'll leave a link to my blog in the description below if you want to find more about that. This area is all a part of the Great Sandy National Park, which links the mainland area to Fraser Island. If you're not able to get to Fraser Island, this is a great alternative to explore the rainforests growing in sand. The lagoon swimming area is great for smaller children or the adults just wanting to sit in the water and relax. Probably why this makes this spot very popular for families. One of the best viewpoints would be the background of the coloured sand cliffs. You can actually drive right past these if the tides are low and there's no obstructions, but from here, they're just as amazing to see as well. Over thousands of years, iron rich minerals have stained the sand with colours of yellow, brown and red. This is all mixed in with the white sand and creating a natural art gallery. After you've finished for the day at Double Island Point, you have the option to drive on to Rainbow Beach and you can click here to check out our experience of that. Otherwise, you can go back the way you came, make a quick pit stop at the car wash and using the ferry crossing back to Noosa. 
Appreciate you watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you for the next one.